three or four years to arrive at this technique. Sweet, salty, yum, 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 buttery. Mm. And scene. <laughs> Corn muffins, yes. so we're gonna get the corn muffins yeah, going because they have first. to bake and uh, we want them to be done before we're, we're cool. finished, so. Um, I'm gonna get some gloves because that's important. Cool, and let me know if I can help you, Christine. So at the restaurant, oh, maybe, maybe you can. Um, okay. At the restaurant we go. serve, we, we knew that we wanted to have something like to go with the uh, fried chicken, like traditionally that would be like a biscuit or cornbread, um, but we wanted to make it our own. Um, again, it's like trying to copy other people or just like follow, strict tradition. Um, so we came up with these corn muffins. They're a little bit lighter than a cornbread, um, but they still have cornmeal in them. We get really amazing cornmeal from a farmer in Illinois. Um, but they're really good with the honey butter and the mix goes, it's so easy. You actually don't need any um, cooking, like, a, like you don't need a mixer. You can just do it by hand. Um, so it starts with a dry mix. So I'm just gonna, can you guys see this? Yeah. Kind of, cool. is there a mirror? No, no they there's have a, a TV. camera. Right about, what? Right yeah, about right you, there. Christina. Okay, you're on television, Hi. and it's brought. It's like, look there we go. Here. Look at you. Yeah, oh my god. Okay, I don't want to watch myself. Okay, <laughs> so um, starts with flour. So I'm gonna pour that in here, um, and then um, we use two different types of cornmeal. We like fine cornmeal and coarse cornmeal because we find that the texture is really nice. So the fine cornmeal kind of just like melts into the uh, batter, and then the coarse cornmeal gives a little crunch. Okay, so then that's the um, flour, <laughs> the cornmeals, both of them, kosher salt, which we really like, and then a little bit of baking powder to give the muffins a little lift. And you will have the recipes, you have yeah. the recipes, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Enjoy. We also do sell this mix at Honey Butter. If, if you, you can buy it online, like honeybutter.com. Yeah. We're always selling. Okay, so <laughs> this is, um, Hey man, your support, your purchase supports 60 um, really well taken care of employees. Yes. So, um, but you can also make this at home, it's fine. So that's, you wanna mix the dry mix together and then we're gonna start to add, um, oh, I'm sugar. Whoops, I forgot sugar. Sugar's important. Sugar's we, important. We want that little bit of sweetness no in there. No self-respecting cornbread can <laughs> that's live without right. sugar. Okay, so that's that. And then we're gonna start adding our um, wet ingredients to the dry. Um, it's whole milk, eggs, um, oil and melted butter. Now we found, yes, I agree, you can clap for that. Um, we have found that adding the, um, when you add cold milk and warm butter, the butter can kind of seize Science. a little bit. I know, right? right? So we're gonna add the eggs, the milk, and the oil and mix that all in first to get it incorporated mm -hmm. and it kind of takes the temperature, um, the edge off the temperature and then we put the butter in at the end. So like. We wanna make sure that you do that just because that's a little chef tip. Okay, so we're gonna spray it pretty well with pan spray because um, we really, really, really don't want it to stick. Um, we want it to kind of come out in one, so. There was three reallys. Three Three really, 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 yeah. We are, yeah. be generous with the pan spray. Yep. And then I'm gonna put this in. Now, since it's been heating so long, um, how does the oven feel hot? Yeah, it's good. Um, it'll start to immediately lift. Qu quality things here at high. At, uh, as soon as you pour it in the pan, it starts to bake. Um, which gives it that nice, um, we put a little baking powder in it, but it'll give it a nice lift. It's like I can already see the batter starting to like go. Yeah, and caramelizes almost immediately. Yep. Yeah. And that's you, got, you get the nice crust. So Josh, gonna put that in the oven. Cool. So one other thing we're gonna get started right away um, is our candied jalapenos. Thank you. Kyle. So You're this welcome. is a Fresno and this is a green jalapeno, but we like the color of both. So we use both at the restaurant. Um, we try to really minimize waste at Honey Butter. So um, we came with this, Candy jalapeno mayonnaise, which is kind of the great combination of spicy and sweet. Um, and I'll tell you first how we candy them. It's incredibly simple. Um, we take the stems off. You don't have to, actually, because you could take them off later, but it'll just make our lives a little easier. Um, and if you don't want it to be as spicy, you could take the seeds out. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm just going to take this whole jalapeno, drop it into some simple syrup. So this is just um, sugar and water equal parts um, brought up to temperature um, to simmer and we're gonna let these peppers just simmer in that until they're really kind of shriveled um, and soft. Do you wanna turn it on? It's on. I've had, I've had yeah. it going. It's oh. on. Um, okay. Yeah. I can't see it. Well, it's not like bubbling, but it's on. Okay. That's the, yeah, that's that one. There we go, got there it. There we go. Yeah. Um, so we're gonna let that simmer until they're really kind of wrinkly and soft um, and ready to go. And what's cool about it is the peppers then will buzz into mayonnaise to make our candy jalapeno mayonnaise. The syrup will now be spicy, simple syrup, mm -hmm. like jalapeno flavor. We actually make, use that to make candied jalapeno margaritas and honey butter fries. Hey now. So. 
Those are delicious. So should we make some fried chicken? Yeah, do we want to do um, the brine? Do you want me to yeah, do the brine? Do you want to talk about the brine? So we touched on that a little bit Here, earlier about talking um, about how to um, get the chicken super juicy, especially since we take the bone out. Um, and we found that brine is the best way to do that. So brine is like a salt sugar solution um, that we soak our chicken in um, for up to a couple days, honestly. Yeah, so usually so 24 hours. 24 hours is ideal, but you can go a little, we can go a little longer because we do huge fats. Yeah, we and we can so adjust much. the concentration too. Right, but the recipe that we gave you is like pretty standard for um, a chicken or two chickens. Um, and you do 24 hours. It doesn't okay. say what poundage hours. do you use? I think it's 18 to 24 okay. hours. What pound? Uh, three like pounds. Three, yeah, three to three, three and a half. Yeah. Depending okay. on what time of year <laughs> and what's happening. But, sure. Um, yeah, go for it. So you want to talk them through sure. while I do it? We're so at normally we do one. heat this up because you want the salt and the sugar to dissolve. Um, and then, of course, you cool it down before you add the pieces of chicken to it. Um, we're just going to show you how we would mix it and then we'll through the magic of demos mm -hmm. here. We're gonna right. um, the time warp. go right to it. But okay. um, we have water first, um, and then we have some salt and some sugar, um, and the ratio should be in your recipe. Um, it's about one-to-one. One. So what kind of, uh, because salt can change a lot yeah. based on what you use, so do you yeah. use like? We the, use diamond crystal kosher. Okay, cool. Um, and it really, it doesn't matter so much what you use. We like that salt. It feels good to yeah. us in terms of, honestly, in terms of how it feels when we're grabbing it. No, totally. And how it yep. tastes, and it's a little bit uh, less dense than some of their competitors. Yeah. But the real important thing is just use the same one across the board. Get used right. to one salt, yep. and then that way you are adjusting based on that one. There's a lot of chef wars with diamond crystal versus Morton's. Yeah. So. One cool thing about a brine is you yeah. can add all kinds of flavors to it. So at Honey Butter, we do a little lemon peel mm. and chili flake. Smell. Um, just gives a little flavor to the um, chicken mm. or whatever the meat is. You could do thyme, you could do any herb. Right. Um, and you, we do brines at Sunday Dinner Club for our pork sometimes, and there we'll, we love orange with pork and, then and some chili. Of this. Yeah, What's so that? chili flake. Chili flake, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So again, normally we would heat this up um, and let it all dissolve. I mean, if you really have a it's strong actually, whisk, so the you water is also room temperature. Yeah. Um, and it looks actually pretty dissolved right now, which is cool. great. But so the next step is to get your chicken, and I'll just, I don't know if you guys can see above. Can you see this chicken over here on the stove? Um, I'll talk about how we cut our chicken. Where do you get your birds? They're Miller's Amish chickens oh, from yeah. Indiana. Um, yep. So they're cage-free, antibiotic-free, humanely raised chickens. You know, besides the corn muffin, the hardest um, thing that we had to do and the most time-consuming and the most challenging was picking a chicken source. We totally. worked on it for a long time. Hmm. Um, this is really important to us. It's the main thing that we sell. and. Um, these were animals, and yeah. we want to respect that, so totally. um, it's important to us. So, Again, anyway. it's the last word. That's right. The it's the last word. So we have um, the pieces of chicken that we bread and fry at Honey Butter are the breast, the thigh, and the drum. The wings, we do a little bit different preparation. We um, do them uh, with a little cornstarch um, and then put a glaze on them. Um, and then, again, the bones become our stock. Um, so we do use everything. Um, but what we do is we do uh, a cut that has gets us two thighs, and uh, the skin is missing from these thighs. We do leave the skin on, but it'll be just fine um, for this for this purposes. So these are the thighs. I'm going to drop those into the brine. The brine actually did dissolve, which is yeah, yeah. We planned it that way. These are the <laughs> the Drummies. drumsticks. Yeah. Um, and then these are the breasts. We split the breasts. I'm getting a face full of heat here, so I'm going to step over. Um, the breasts we actually split in half um, just to kind of make them cook a little more efficiently. Um, and we also do this cool thing, I don't know if you can see this, but we give a little slit to kind of just gently butterfly. Um, it helps get the brine in there, and it also helps the chicken cook evenly. Mm -hmm. um, and again, our challenge is we might drop 100 pieces of chicken in a fryer, and we need to make sure that they all get done um, pretty quickly. If you're at home, you don't have to do this, but you really have to control your temperature, and we'll talk more about that in a moment. So this part can't be underscored because getting that many pieces of chicken in this case, or you know, if you're frying french fries at Lambo or whatever, like getting that number of things to cross the finish line at the same time, the same totally. quality, yeah. is something that's overlooked for most chefs. But when, I mean, if you could just master that, yeah. it's an incredible, you're, you're at a different level. I mean, think about if I have, we literally have three <laughs> fryers that could hold up to 75 pieces of chicken, um, maybe more depending on the size of the chicken. 
Um, and if we put them all into the fryer, I can't lift the basket and have one piece that's way overcooked and one piece that's way undercooked. So we yeah. having consistently sized things go in the fryer is probably our most important requirement mm -hmm. for the chicken. Yeah. So, so as y'all can see with the brine too, like it might seem like a big batch of brine for like a uh, chicken, but we want to give it some room to sort of right. yeah. marinate in it for right. a while. Definitely. These right. containers are great though, even for home cooks, these Lexons. So, mm -hmm. um, okay, so chicken's gonna sit in the brine. Um, through the, the magic of TV. Um, <laughs> we're going to put this chicken in the fridge so Thank we can you. use it later. We have our brine chicken down here, which I'm going to leave in the container for a moment while we get our chicken dredge ready to go. Um, so this is our secret, so take notes on this one. Um, we um, tried a million different ways to do fried chicken. Right um, here in front of God and everyone. Yeah, we love simple, but we also love there to be like, you know, some zippy flavors in there. So. Um, we Nine ingredients well, in this pan. It, honestly, and you can make really good fried chicken with just salt and black pepper, so don't be afraid if you don't have all these things. Just go for it anyway um, with what you got. Um, but it starts with flour, um, so this is just all purpose flour. Um, King Arthur, something like that? Yeah, we use King Arthur at the restaurant. Yeah. Yeah. Um, one trick is that we also add a little bit of rice flour to it. Rice flour. Um, gives you a rice little flour. bit crispier. Yeah. Um, kind of like cornstarch, it just like crisps up the batter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's a little, it, it cooks a little crispier and uh, so we get the best of both worlds with the wheat flour and the rice flour. Um, and then we have all of our spices. So before that, a little baking powder, just a tiny bit, gives yep. a little lightness to the crust. Yep. Um, and then we have salt. Um, we like to season the the batter, it's funny, one of the things we always tell our cooks is make sure everything tastes good as you're doing it. So when we mix our chicken flour, you know, it, I don't know if it's a glamorous job, but I really, we really do make them take a taste of it to make sure that the chicken flour itself actually tastes good, which I know seems crazy, but like, give no. it a little tiny taste and yeah, make sure it tastes good. I mean, we've got, here in Wisconsin, the land of sausage, I know, <laughs> uh, well, it is, I know so many sausage makers that would always taste the raw Beef, totally. pork, Got what have you, yeah. and that would tell them about the entire yeah. batch, and then they might send it back and say, yeah. like, I'm literally not making this today. Yeah. yeah. But it was, you know, they had to have you gotta that. Taste gotta have it. But the brine seasons the chicken internally, but we have this, the, one of the best, the best part about fried chicken is the crust, right? Yeah. So you want to make sure that that is seasoned and not just on the outside, that it's the yeah. flour itself is seasoned when it adheres to the chicken. Right. So that was onion powder I just put in there, a little garlic powder. Um, and then we have our cayenne pepper, just a pinch, give a little heat to it. Um, and then lots of black pepper. We love black pepper and fried chicken. So you can see that's some fresh cracked black pepper. And then the last ingredient um, in here, and then we're also gonna put on the outside of the chicken is our smoked paprika. This is actually a Spanish spice. It's uh, called pimentone. Oh, really? It's a sweet, yeah. smoky. I'm a Hungarian, so it's oh, we, yeah, we're using sort of the a smoke dark stuff. Sort of Did our friendship just get ruined? <laughs> well, it's kind of a we're on the we're on the we're on the ropes, but it's okay. <laughs> so we'll swing them back with the honey butter. Yeah, I, yeah, I think we'll we'll see what happens. You can definitely use Hungarian. You can do whatever you want. Okay, yeah. I, well, thing. I know I can, but I'm just yeah. <laughs> so what, it's what you guys use. So how long did it take to R and D this? Uh, a, a while. I mean, we did this dinner every year for several years at Sunday Dinner Club, and every year it would shift a little bit. It probably took us three or four years to arrive at this technique. Mm -hmm. It was always like not crunchy enough, and then we tried adding the rice flour, and that helped. Um, yeah. We it wasn't flavorful enough, so we started adding different spice combinations, and we kind of got where we were like, oh wow, that's delicious chicken. Yeah. Um, and that kind of got set, and then of course once the honey butter gets on there, it's a whole new ball. It's game. all over. Yeah. One of yeah. the reasons for the smoked paprika is we found um, that it goes really well with the honey butter. There's something about the sweet, salty um, butter and the smokiness of the paprika that just sort of works well. You'll see. So uh, <laughs> in cooking, there's no, there's no, there's no new ideas, right? Uh, I mean, we're all no. just, yeah, right. taking, you we're know. I mean, it. from the first time that humankind basically had a raw meat fall into the fire and caramelized, and they went, oh, that's good. Right. That's really good. We've just been riffing ever yeah, since. Yeah, I mean, it's true. No, it's true. <laughs> so was there any, not that you necessarily started with, but was there any fried chicken recipe where you're like, Wow, you yes. know, Keller's Ad Hoc Fried Chicken. Keller's yeah. Ad Hoc Fried Chicken. Was it really? Yeah. Was it really? Yeah. 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 Good 100%. call. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's um, I'm hugely in, inspiring. I've made it and yeah, it's, it's delicious. Great. And yeah. he's such a tactician, but it's also yeah. like worth every ounce of time yep. and energy. Yeah. Yeah. And we did. We cooked a million different recipes. His recipe was amazing. 
Um, he does a like a double coat on it, um, but his spice mix is great, and it's it's definitely similar to ours. It's not the same, but yeah. um, his recipe is definitely in, in in the DNA of our recipe. His so thank you, Thomas. His is amazing. His thank you, Thomas. Cookbook is the only one that I can cook from, yeah, it's right. but it's fantastic. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So we got our mix. We got our buttermilk. So this is just straight buttermilk, and obviously we have the chicken already from the brine. Um, so I'm going to take the chicken out of the brine, and we're going to go into the buttermilk, and we're going to talk about battering. Kyle, I'm going to drop this down here. You yeah, want yeah. Any of these chicken juices? So a um, couple key things. When you're working with fried chicken or battering anything, it really helps to mentally prepare. Um, and you want to think about wet hand, dry hand. Okay, mm -hmm. it's like a Mr. Miyagi wax kind on, of situation. Wax yeah, absolutely. Don't cross them. Um, no, so don't as best cross you can. Them. You're not going to be perfect. So but. that's a Ghostbusters. We have two don't narratives going. Don't cross the going. streams. Right. Yes. We have we have we have uh, Karate Kid and Ghostbusters. Exactly. Going. Right. Yeah, right. And Josh the, and I are both children of the '80s. So yeah. the dry hand, if it gets a little wet, and then you go back in the dry, it's going to start to get clumpy and messy and sticky, and it's just going to slow you down. You're going to have to switch out your glove or wash your hand. So we really try to stay. Mentally prepared for that. It's actually harder than it seems. I know it's. I was like, gonna say, how many times has this backfired with I people mean, you are training? I often when I'm doing a demo, <laughs> um, it backfires. So, um, all right. So take sure. the chicken out of the brine, and then we're gonna actually gonna go right into the buttermilk. Um, we'll usually do several pieces, um, and again, some days we batter. 2,500 pieces of chicken, so um, we try to move fast. So what you do today? Yeah. <laughs> when Josh and I opened our restaurant, we, we I know we mentioned it before, but we really did think that we would going to serve 100 people a day and that Josh and I would work in the kitchen every day and we'd butcher all the chicken and fry it and clean up the kitchen and go home. And then the first day, you know, 1,000 people show up and we're like, we're going to have to spent hire, the whole night hire some more people right yeah. away. Yeah. Um, and now we do yeah, sometimes 2,500 pieces. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right, so chicken and buttermilk, want to make sure the fully gets coated. Wet hand? Wet hand is on the left here. This is my dry hand. Um, and then I'm going to take the piece of chicken, place it in the flour. I'm going to do a couple pieces at the same time. Actually, we'll do both the drums so we stay nice and So even. as an anecdote of how beloved the fried chicken, honey butter fried chicken is, uh, my brother had a work colleague that would say that his um, low honey butter fried chicken light would come on about every eight days. And if he didn't go back and have more, he would lose any superpowers he may have. We're very like we have a lot of very passionate folks yeah. about the fried chicken. Yeah. So as you saw me battering, I'll do the next one so you guys can see, but I'm really kind of pressing to make sure that we get every nook and cranny. And honestly, getting a little bit of moisture into this mix is good because you start to get those kind of like um, Craglies, we call them, of, of flour and buttermilk. It's a technical that, term in yeah. the culinary world. So I start by sprinkling over the wet part because, again, if I just reach down and touch that, my dry hand is going to get wet. Yeah. Um, so I start by sprinkling it over, and then I just start really flipping and rolling and pressing. Um, there's a million ways to do this. People do it in a bag. Um, the, the idea is all the same. You're trying to just make sure it's well coated. Um, and if you were doing a double batter, which some chefs do, we would now go back into the buttermilk and then back into the flour, and you'd have a really. And extra that's just thick bananas, crust. by the way. I think it's a little too much. I've tried yeah. that, and I actually didn't like it as much. Yeah, but I, I was like, that's now we're just going too far. One um, of the, oh, go ahead. How many in the early days? How many nights did you go home and fall asleep and dream of battering chicken? We still dream about <laughs> battering chicken. So I don't know if you can still see this chicken flour, but um, if you look now in here, you see what we these little crunch like these little bits. If we fry them are delicious. It's a dangerous thing to have buckets of this around our restaurant. Um, <laughs> been trying to go to the gym a little more. It's like um, the por this is the pork rind of the chicken world, really basically. Is. Yeah. So we've got our battered chicken. The next step is to fry it. Um, I'm going to take off the one glove. So frying chicken is not as scary as it seems. Um, you definitely can do this at home um, in a shallower pan, like a cast iron pan. That's um, how we started. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, these little things are wonderful. Um, and obviously, this is a great one we got here. Um, but, and this just controls the heat for us, but the biggest thing is to control your temperature. A lot of people will fry chicken at home and be frustrated because it looks beautiful and crispy and then you go inside, cut it open, yes. and it's basically raw. Yes. Um, and, and I've played that game and lost. Yeah. yeah. So that reason why that happens is because you're frying at too high of a temperature. Normally we're taught to fry, you know, french fries or something like that at a high temp. You're trying to get it crispy fast. Um, but with chicken, it's chicken. You know, if you think about <laughs> cooking a piece of chicken, you can't do it medium rare. You have to cook it completely. So controlling your temp is the most important part of it. Um, at the restaurant, we fry at about 320 degrees. 
Um, so that seems low. Um, but we're putting a lot of chicken to our fryers, and then you also need to factor in that the fryer has to recover, right. which means when you put the piece of cold chicken in, the oil temperature drops, drops. and you need to come back. Yep. And if it drops to 250, yeah. you're going to have very greasy chicken. So. Especially if you're not using a professional piece of equipment. Like yeah. if you're using a cast iron pan, you really want to regulate the yeah. oil. Totally. Think, think of it as like an, a, a different style of sous vide. <laughs> Excuse me. Totally, you're right. Really? Yeah. yeah, you're trying to draw it out. Yeah. Um, let it go, get the co cooking done, um, but make sure the crust is beautifully golden. So, I mean, um, we do, it's a, it's, it was a little crazy at first to make sure that we could fry thousands of pieces of chicken and like the nightmare is somebody cutting open a piece of chicken and having it not be fully Let's cooked. Let's not go to that place. Um, yeah, but we've spent a lot of time <laughs> figuring out how to avoid st that. St so, traumatic. Very still tra a trigger. Very traumatic. <laughs> I'm gonna grab my piece of chicken, I'm gonna place it in the fryer. When you put a piece of food into a fryer, we like to be very gentle and focused. Um, don't be doing anything else at, that, at this moment. And I'm gonna place it in there, I'm gonna let it drop away from me. So if it splashes, it's gonna splash that way as opposed towards me. Um, they don't have the bone in them, so they're gonna cook faster than the drumstick. I'm gonna um, pull this, Josh. You're gonna pull it? I think so. That's fine. Oh, it's pretty. It's pretty, put that down for the cameras. Ooh, look at that. Look at that. Can we get a shot of this? Come on. <laughs> yeah. Um, Notice that I... Um, if, we, if we cut it, will the juices run clear? <laughs> yes, yes, it's done. <laughs> so a little trick to, um, I cook with a lot of cast iron at home, mm -hmm. um, and I know when I pull something on the oven, I have definitely done this before, where I walk away and listen to music, yes. and I go like, Look, I'll yep. do that. Yep. So I leave the towel on the pan. That's right a little there. tip. Right there in my thumb. Still. There it is. Right there. Oh yeah, you can see it. Yeah, that's no. the spot. Yeah. Don't do that. So a couple of quick things before we move on to the next dish. I just checked the peppers, they're getting close. I think we'll do that after the slaw. Yeah, I'm gonna make the honey butter. Cool. Yeah. Um, but the chicken, I just wanna tell you guys, like just listen to it, it's kinda like. Like it's singing. It's not super crazy, it's not not bubbling, it just sounds just right. Um, I gave it a little shake just to kinda make sure that they're not sticking together. Um, so far it looks pretty beautiful and nice and blonde still. Like if it was really dark at this point, I'd be concerned mm. that the temperature is too high. Yeah. Having a really good meat thermometer, um, this is a great one it seems, um, but something that's really instant read and, and powerful. I can't definitely tell you that investing in a really high quality meat thermometer is um, a great thing for your kitchen. And we actually have them all over our restaurants because mm. We want to be able to take the temp, and I can also take the temperature of the oil. And, they, in. and they've come down a lot. It yeah. used to be they're quite expensive. Um, uh, bought one as a gift. My brother has an outdoor. Fr anyway, it doesn't matter. But he can be literally outside or inside his cottage while he's got a smoker or a fryer, yeah. like sixty feet away, and it'll read the temperature. That's amazing. It's really cool. Yeah. I don't want to just keep like uh, tooting Volrath's horn, but like <laughs> this fryer that I just put the cold chicken in, just recover it, and it is exactly three hundred and twenty degrees and holding. So Boom. I'm, uh, yeah, I'm impressed. Yes, um, well nice. done. Nice. Took the temperature of the oil. Um, I'm not even going to start temp temping the chicken yet because I know it's not done. We'll get there in probably about seven, eight minutes. We'll start checking the Something our cooks always ask us, um, especially our younger cooks, are like, how long does it take? And we're like, it's done when it's done. Um, but in Denver, longer. In Denver, longer, because you're <laughs> yeah. at altitude. Yeah. Um, in, ge in general, I would say like 10 to 16 minutes yeah. is a good range. But Depending like, you can't rely on that with, with chicken. Because you got to temp it, because you don't want to have yeah. raw chicken. Yeah. Cool. All right, let's talk about honey, honey butter. butter. So honey butter, um, we... The first word. Anyway. The first words. <laughs> um, we are um, super lucky and grateful that we um, source both our butter and our honey from farmers in Wisconsin. So thank you very much. Woo! Yes. Um, we uh, honey's from uh, Gene at Gentle Breeze here. Which some of y'all might know. Green City Farmers the, Market. Or at the mm -hmm. Madison, Madison Farmers Market. Market. Yep. And then we get our butter from Nordic Creamery. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. Sure. Okay, so it starts with butter, and we are pre-tempered this. I'm using a glove just because I... Salted or unsalted? Unsalted, unsalted because we want to add our own salt. Um, honey is sweet, obviously, but it changes. So you want to be able to adjust yeah. as needed. So, because um, it's an organic product that responds to the environment instead what? of a big process. Yeah. Anyway. Okay, so it you starts with butter, it. and um, I'm going to turn our mixer on. Whoa, first, and we, um, I want to get this going because 
it takes a while because we want to whip a lot of air into it so mm -hmm. it becomes light and fluffy. So then when you spread it on the chicken, it just goes like this. I'm gonna go up to speed three. Wow. Um, you can do this by hand, but if you have a mixer, I would recommend. Yeah. All right, Delicious. let's check the chicken and then let's finish the butter. Great. Yeah. One more attempt on the chicken. It looks beautiful. Yeah, it Golden. really does. It's browned up beautifully. Good. Oh, we're so close. 163, 165. Woohoo! Um, so that, that's it. We're gonna let it rest for just a second. It's like the ball drop at New Year's <laughs> Eve, isn't it? Yeah. And the breast is perfect. It's hitting right over 165. So that looks great. We're gonna let it rest. Let the excess oil drip off. Be, still be very careful, even though you're excited to eat it. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna let it drain a little. We're gonna dump it onto a wire rack to let it rest. Um, one of the things about fried chicken is you don't necessarily want to bite into it right away. No. We try to let it rest for a few minutes before we give it to you um, because it, you want the juices to settle. Just like any other piece of meat, you want to let it rest and kind of kind of settle down. It's also insanely hot. Yeah. So when it comes out of the fryer, we do a couple things. We season it with salt. It's mouth changing hot. Um, <laughs> and then, <laughs> that was good. I mentioned earlier the smoked paprika. Cal, you should come down here. Yeah, right? okay. Oh, all right. um, smell this. So, the smoked paprika, the sweet, it's pimenton, Spanish paprika. Um, we sprinkle it on and you can just smell it as it hits the chicken. Yeah, yeah. It's just not a little spicy bit. at all. It's got a sweet smokiness to yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Um, and you, it just kind of gives you the aroma right when it hits. The merits of paprika are like, you could. You could write a whole book about it. Maybe you should. It's such Amazing. a subtle, I got other books to write, but <laughs> it's such a fantastic, fantastic spice. Yeah. And we do yeah. a lot of um, Spanish food at Sunday Dinner Club, so using pimenton is almost yeah. something we do often. Yeah. All right, honey butter. So, uh, honey, sorry, Pat. Yeah, sorry. butter, this is the second part of the honey. So, um, <laughs> I pre-measured so, so how many ingredients? Three ingredients. Well, honey and butter and salt. Yes. Um, Look at that beautiful honey in there. That's great. Yeah. Okay, so we're gonna add the honey, and then I'm gonna re-whip it with the honey in there. Yeah. And then I'm just gonna sort of sprinkle the salt in while it's moving. Um, I didn't just dump it in there because, I mean, obviously it's in a mixer, but I really do wanna get it in even distribution. Sprinkle it in. Salt, a little more salt? Yeah, I think so. We're gonna taste it. Yeah. Because you got to. You'll get there, don't worry. I'm just gonna help mm. myself to a spoon here. <laughs> so sweet, salty, yum, 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 yum. buttery awesomeness. Should we just visually put a little on the on the chicken while it's hot? Oh, so they can yes. oh my god. I'm gonna that give it like so 30 more seconds. So I, we should have Kyle put some butter yeah, in there. We should have Kyle do it. Kyle, are you willing? I'm willing. It's a small sacrifice. It's so simple, it's almost stupid how it's a perfect <laughs> balance. Yeah. It's but real. anything off, I mean, it's like I'm gonna get poetic for a second. It's like looking at a painting or hearing a great piece of music or something where if you took one tiny element out or you put one extra in, the whole thing would be off skew and just not as pleasurable. Totally. Agreed. Yeah. It's the perfect flavor com oh my god. Oh my god, look at that. Look you wanna do that. it down here, Christine? Look at that. Wow. Yeah. Oh my god. Um, all right, Beautiful. so Kyle, grab one of those spoons. I'll do it. And so we tell people to butter the chicken like they're buttering toast. Yep. Um, so just get a nice little bit of butter. Probably the back of your spoon kind of situation. All right. Yep. And then just butter it. Just butter. Can I do a drummy? Do whatever you want, yeah. yeah. Go, you go to town. I hope it's good. Come on. And just like give it a second, just like let's watch it. Let's see it melt. Yeah. Oh, let's go a little more. So it turns out the reason why we're successful is because this oh. looks really good on Instagram. Um, <laughs> so when you open a restaurant, just make sure that it's very photogenic. Um, butter oh. melting on chicken is a winning combination. Holy um, God, by the way. Thank you. <laughs>